Your attention for just a moment, please. Now, before we start the show up, it's of vital importance to impress upon your mind that you can help the police department materially in convicting any of the suspects who will appear on this platform tonight. If you see anyone in the show up that you think guilty of committing a crime against you or any of your friends, don't hesitate to raise your hand. The officers here in charge will take care of your case. Now, for the benefit of those who've never attended one of these show-ups, please do not be afraid to raise your hand if you recognize the prison. You will be able to see them, but it's impossible for the suspect to see beyond that screen. Many of you here, no doubt, have had your life threatened at the point of a gun, been knocked on the head and robbed of your watch, had your home burglarized. The man you're looking for may be in this show-up. In order to help you identify these men, I'm going to ask each one of them to answer a few questions so that you may hear their voices. All right, Jim. Send in the first group. He's been arrested seven times and is now wanted in Seattle for murder. Subject number two. What's your name? Washington White. Where do you live, Washington? I didn't give up my address at the seven. I've just lived it. Ever been arrested before? Yes, sir. I was on parole. What for? Robbery. Is that all? Yes, sir. What about that time you served in Birmingham for petty larceny? Oh, I was just picking up things. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Subject number three. What's your name? Jack Turkle. Where do you live? 368 Hudson Street. Okay. What data have you on Jack Kirkland? He's charged with grand theft. Yes, I saw his picture in the paper and read about the bank holder. But I was wondering if you'd learned anything about his previous activities. He's never been booked before. Of course, he claims that he knows nothing about the holdup. Just driving for the pair that pulled the job. He may be telling the truth at that. Maybe. But that uh, car that they made the getaway in. Is registered in Kirkman's name. Not a man. Mm. That's all. Would it be possible for me to see him after the show? I think so. I'll ask the captain. Thank you. What's your name? Joe Harris. Where do you live? What? Where were you arrested? Here you are, Mr. Malone. Thank you. Hello, Jack. You know, you're in a pretty bad jam, my boy. You didn't come here to tell me that, did you? No. I'm going to try to help you. Oh, so you're a lawyer. No, <laughs> you're wrong again. As a matter of fact, I'm a private investigator. Say, that story you told the police, is that on the level? Sure, I'm no crook. How about the getaway car registered in your name? Oh, I bought that secondhand, a chauffeur people that wanted something better than a cab, you know, or the usual <laughs> rental job. <laughs> That's funny. John Prescott the second, a chauffeur. Oh? That's all right, my boy. We can handle this without dragging in the family. As a matter of fact, your father is dead. Yeah, so I gathered when we buried him three years ago. 
You buried him? Sure, it's customary, ain't it? That's impossible. Now listen, Prescott. It's to your advantage to be frank with me. Oh, wait a minute. One of us is crazy. But my name ain't Prescott. On the level, are you assuming an alias to protect your family? I'm not protecting any family. I give my right name to the cops. It's almost unbelievable. However, you ought to know. I suppose it'll have to do. It'll only be for the one night. You going to pay for your friend's cabin, too? Yes. He can take the one next to yours. All right. Oh, uh, if there's anything you folks want, I'll be right up in front. All right, thanks. That's your doghouse down there. OK, I slept in worse. Start that again. Well, I'm glad this is about over. Four hundred and fifty miles in one day is just a little too much. Be a nice girl and hand me that paper, will you? Thanks, dear. Are you sure, darling, that you wouldn't like to have me read it to you? No, thank you. I certainly got a break when I married you, John Prescott II. With a millionaire father that wouldn't wipe his feet on them. After all, dear, you knew that before you married me. Yes, I knew, but I... What did you? I, uh... I gotta make a telephone call. Could I use your telephone, please? Help yourself. It's just inside the door. Thanks. <laughs> Had to make a phone call. Phone call? What about? Oh, I don't know, but it must have been pretty important. Yeah? Long distance? I want to talk to Jay Malone, 704 Security Building, Los Angeles. That's right. Oh, Don, I can't stand much more of this. You don't think it's any picnic for me, do you? Can't we get away? Just the two of us. Yeah, I wish we could. But what will we use for money? I don't know. Hello, Mr. Malone? Who? Prescott. Jack Prescott. I just ran across your notice in the paper. That's right. Yes, he's my father. Oh. Oh, I see. No, I didn't know that. Where are you now? An auto camp? Yeah. 
About 10 miles south of a bird called Chester. 90 miles from L.A. Yes, I'll get an early start in the morning. I ought to be there about 11 o'clock. All right, I'll see you then. All right, just call Los Angeles. Find out how much it was and I'll pay you later. All right, son. Well, it looks like the drought is over. What do you mean? I've just had some great news. What's the matter? So, that's how it is. My wife and my pal. Well, Now, we've got to get out of here before he comes to. Out of it. We've got to get away. Yeah. We better not leave now. We better wait till it's dark. Did you identify the body? No, it's uh, not the man I've been looking for. I was hoping you'd be able to clear up this case. And you any leads? No, we're up against a stone wall. We've looked up the fingerprints, but none of these three have any police records. And that old fossil at the auto camp has been unable to give us any definite description of the pair. He says he calculates the woman was a blonde, and they were both rather youngish. Youngish? Youngish. <laughs> that isn't much to go on, is no, it? it? But I thought people had to register at these camps. Well, they're supposed to, but old Watkins is rather careless. All he's interested in is money. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Well, thanks for coming over, Mr. Malone. That's quite all right. Goodbye. So long. What do you think? You look like a college professor. Well, I hate to tell you what you look like. Oh, Mr. Clayton, don't you think you could love me as a brunette? I could love you if you're here. But will you please try and remember that from now on my name is McDonald, not Clayton. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I won't forget again. See that you don't. Mr. and Mrs. McDonald. Mr. and Mrs. McDonald. Mr. and Mrs. McDonald.
Come in. Oh, hello. How do you do? So, you put that bail up for me. Yes. Say, that was mighty wide of you, Mr. Malone. Oh, that's all right. I'm hoping to get uh, this case of yours dismissed. I don't know why you're doing all this for me. I can't pay you. Bring up a chair and sit down. I arranged for your release and left word to have you come over here to discuss a little matter of business. I don't suppose you would have any objection to picking up a cool half million, would you? People don't pick up that kind of money, Mr. Malone. Sometimes they inherit it. You see, my business is locating missing heirs. Yeah. <laughs> What's that got to do with me? Who is he? Jack Prescott. Oh, I get it. When you saw me at the show up, you thought that I was Prescott. Exactly. I've been looking for him for some time to inform him that he had inherited his father's fortune. Gosh, so lucky stiff. Very aptly put, my boy. He happens to be dead. But I see no reason why we shouldn't collect that inheritance. Nothing to him, Malone. I don't want that kind of money. Oh, I see. You'd much rather spend the next five years of your life in prison. They couldn't do that. Why not? Juries are not very lenient with bank robbers these times. But I'm innocent. Perhaps. But who's going to believe that story? Unless the Lacy's are willing to substantiate it. Why shouldn't they? It's true. My dear boy, that pair are only concerned in their own safety. Oh, of course, if I was to engage the finest criminal attorney in the state to defend them, I feel sure they would be willing to sign a statement exonerating you. How about it? It's up to you whether you prefer being a millionaire or a number. You don't give a guy much choice, do you? Henry, I want you to meet uh, John Prescott the second. How do you do? Well, it's a long deferred pleasure, my boy. You. Let me take after your father. I'm glad you think so. And Mr. Malone, my associate, Mr. Brown. Mr. Malone? Of course. <laughs> You're the gentleman who succeeded in tracking down this elusive young man. <laughs> I'm sure we all owe you a very great debt of gratitude. Thank you, sir. I was just explaining that it'll take some time to terminate our trusteeship and effect a transfer of the property. Of course, uh, I understand. I hope you won't find your old home too dull, Jack. No, I, uh, I like it. Then perhaps you'll determine to settle down here. Well, you see, I, uh, I was just a youngster when I went away. I, I uh, haven't any friends here. Of course. Pity my son isn't here. You two were in the same class at college, weren't you? Oh, sure. Uh, th that's right. Uh, where, where is he now? In Europe, for about six months. <laughs> That, that's too bad, ain't it? I'd like to see him again. Well, perhaps just as well for the peace and quiet of Mayfield that he isn't here. <laughs> you certainly were a pair of wild youngsters. <laughs> perhaps they've both learned discretion. Well, I hope so, at any rate. Well, we won't take up any more of your time. You can reach us at the hotel. Yes. Good day. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, your stepmother is here, you know. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Joyce told me. I think he'd appreciate it if 
If you paid your respects. Well, under the circumstances, I sort of hate to... Oh, nonsense. Mrs. Prescott has nothing but the kindliest feelings toward you. Go and see her. Well, if you think I ought to... Ah, that's the spirit, my boy. That's the spirit. Well, good day. Nice boy. Nice boy. I tell you, I'd rather be shot than go and see that woman. My dear boy, it's only a matter of common courtesy to pay your respects to your father's widow. Don't forget, she's the one person around here that saw Prescott after he was growing up. Yes, at his graduation exercises. Five years ago in cap and gown. And boy, you haven't anything to worry about if you just watch your step. I wish you'd come along, Malone. You could, you know, or throw me a line if I got stuck. No, this is a family affair. It wouldn't look right. Well, what'll I talk about? Let her talk. You be shy and uh, reticent. I'll be tongue-tied. Now, <laughs> well, let's see if I've got this straight. My parents were divorced when I was eight, right? Mm-hmm. Mother took me to California, died there during my second year in college. Father remarried a year after the divorce. I ran through the money my mother left me. Father got me out of several scrapes and finally land, landed me an engineering job in Tampico and told me from then on I was on my own. I was fired a month later for being drunk and that's the last the family ever heard of me. Very good. You better get stumped. She's expecting you as well. Well, keep your fingers crossed. Don't worry. You put it over. So you're Jack. That's right. You've changed a lot since the last time I saw you. It's quite all right, you know. I'm your half-sister, Diane. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'd forgotten. I, I mean, well, you've grown up, haven't you? People usually do, you know. That's right. Please sit down. Mother will be here presently. You know, it seems strange to suddenly have a grown-up brother. I think I'm going to like it, though. Thanks. I think I am, too. I think it's great. I mean, having a sister. I... How long has it been since your visit that summer? Well, I don't just remember. Funny. A long time. Let me see. I was seven. Much too young for you to notice. But I thought you were grand. Mother, this is Jack. You don't have to tell me. Oh, I'm so glad to see you again, Jack. Thanks. It's nice to see you again. You've hardly changed at all. I'm older. You don't look it. Where are you stopping? I think it's called the Hotel Sylvan. You'd be much more comfortable if you came and stayed with us. Oh, I just couldn't do that. Please do. We'd love to have you. After all, you know this is your home. Oh, you're awfully kind. I'd like to, but I got a friend, uh, Mr. Malone. Oh, bring him along. We have plenty of room. Yes, Mother and I rattle around in this huge house. Please come. Oh, 
I just don't know what to say. I'll ask Jay. Mr. Malone. Will you ring for tea, dear? I'll just take a cup of coffee. Uh, black. Oh, just sit down, Jack. We have such a lot to talk about. Jay, we can't do it. Why not? Isn't the idea of accepting the hospitality of the people who are robbing a little too much, even for you? What's the matter? Did you fall for the girl? Of course not. They were both so decent, so kind. By the way, you forgot to mention the fact that Mrs. Prescott and her daughter would inherit the estate in the event of Prescott's death. Oh, did I? You know you did. I didn't know anything about it until that nitwit Joyce brought it up. Well, after all, you're not robbing a penniless widow and a starving child. They have plenty. I suppose that makes it all right. Yeah. Now, see here, Jack. Whether you like it or not, we are accepting the old lady's invitation. Don't you realize what a swell break it is? No, I don't. Now, listen. If there was the slightest doubt in the mind of those hick attorneys as to your identity, the fact that Mrs. Prescott had taken you into her home would remove it. Come on, get your stuff. You're in this now, and it's too late to back out. You're going through it. Thomas? Good morning, Mr. Jack. I'm sorry I'm late with the car, but there's something the matter with it. What seems to be the trouble? Well, I don't exactly know. Perhaps you'd rather use the sedan. Well, let's take a look at it. There it is. Well, I can fix that in a few minutes. May I help you? No, I'll manage. Well, if it isn't my favorite brother. Hello. What are you doing? Oh, just whipping up an old-fashioned fruitcake. Fred, how does it happen that you know so much about cars anyway? I ought to. I've had plenty of experience. Really? I suppose among your varied activities, you were once a chauffeur. Well, as a matter of fact, I was. The estate is settled. I suppose you'll be going away. Well, yes, in a few days. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, Diane. You don't know what it's meant to me being here with you and your mother. You'll be back. Oh, look at your face. You're a sight. Yes. Is there a girl? Someone who's waiting for you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm glad. You know, it's silly, but I believe I'd be jealous of any girl you cared for. But to be jealous? Come on, we got a lot of things to do. That reminds me. Mr. Malone wants us to stop at the hotel and inquire for his mail. Okay.
No, officer, we weren't going to a fire. No matter where you're going, you can't do 60 on this road. Thanks, officer, we'll remember that. What's your name? Jack Prescott. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Prescott, but I'll have to give you a ticket. It's my fault. I should have remembered hawks on wheels is always hanging around that turn. Let me see your driver's license. that young fellow who just drove away. That's Mr. Prescott. Really? Yes, ma'am. He's just come into a pile of money. Just take the lady's bag. I'll pick you up after lunch. All right. Dinner, thank you. Sugar? Uh, one, please. And uh, a little lemon. Cookie? Uh, no, thank you. Thanks. Hello, children. Oh, hello. Oh, uh, who won the tournament? Diane, of course. I'm terrible at tennis. You're more expert at driving a car, darling. A little too expert, from what I hear. Oh, don't blame Jack, Mummy. I egg him on. I want to see what the roadster would do. We found out, too. <laughs> I beg pardon, madam. There's a lady and gentleman calling to see Mr. Prescott. To see me? Yes, Mr. Jack. Did they give their names? The lady says she's your wife. Show them in, Carter. Yes, madam. No. I, I think I'd better see her alone. Well, you look. But you shaved off your mustache. Did I? Oh, so I have. How do you do? I'm Jack's stepmother. How do you do? This is Mr. McDonald. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you come in? This is my daughter, Diane. Mrs. Prescott, allow me to present Mr. Malone. Mr. Do? Malone, Mr. McDonald. How do you do? How Won't do you do? sit down? Thank you. Will you have some tea? Please. Jack didn't tell me he was expecting you. Oh, he wasn't expecting me. I wanted to surprise him. I think you succeeded admirably. Mr. McDonald was driving through and kindly offered to bring me along. Wasn't that nice of him? It was a pleasure. You're not expecting to leave town right away, are you, Mr. McDonald? No, uh, I may stick around for a day or two. Depends. Oh, but, uh, by the way, uh, oh, how absurd. 
You know Jack has never told me your first name. What? Oh, uh, why, uh, uh... Jack calls me Faye, and sometimes Faye <laughs> Well, if you don't mind, I'll just call you Faye. You know, it's rather confusing having two Mrs. Prescott's in one family. Are your bags here? No, I left them at the hotel. Well, we'll send for them right away. Oh, no, really, that's too much of an imposition. We'll, we'll go to the hotel. Oh, nonsense. You will stay too, won't you, Mr. McDonald? Well, <laughs> yes, I, I'd be delighted, of course, but are you sure it wouldn't inconvenience you? Not in the least. Let me see. Oh, Jack, I'll put you and Say in the front room. It has twin beds. And I'll give Mr. McDonald your rules room. Dear, will you tell Thomas to go for the bags at once? Are yours there too, Mr. McDonald? No, mine are in the car. I'll get them. Excuse me. What a lovely place you have here, Mrs. Prescott. We find it very charming. Yes. Quite a bit different from uh, auto camps, isn't it? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. I just happen to have heard of your cross-country tour. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? It's all right. No one saw me. Well, Malone's on to us. What are you talking about? Right after you left the room, he pulled some crack about auto camps. How could he know anything about that? Well, he's the one that dug up this phony air. Figure it out yourself. Didn't say anything about him in that article. I know. The old lady just told me. Listen, Don, we're sitting on a volcano. Let's, let's forget about this money and get out of here. Wait a minute. If Malone knows that Jack is dead, it means that he helped put over this other bird. Oh, I get you. He can't expose us without exposing himself. Certainly. And aside from legal complications, Jack Prescott's a lot more valuable to him alive. That's that. I'll be glad when we get out of here. I just saw your uh, husband down in the garden communing with nature. Why don't you go down and do your stuff now? All right, I will. Why didn't you tell me about Faye? There were so many things that I wanted to tell you, but I just... Things that you weren't exactly proud of, you mean? I think I understand. Diane, no matter what happens, I want you to know that I... I... I hope I'm not interrupting. No, not at all. You don't mind, do you, dear, if I borrow my husband for a few minutes? We have a lot to talk about. Why, of course not. Excuse me. You're very fond of your little sister, aren't you? Well, it is rather funny, you know. What is it you want to talk to me about? I've decided to give you a divorce. I see, and of course you'll expect alimony. No, but let's say a modest settlement. What is your idea of a modest settlement? 100,000. Do you think you could manage on that? I'll try. You can arrange things with your bankers in the morning. What if I refuse? My dear boy, under the circumstances, I don't see how you can refuse. Surely it's worth that much to get rid of me. Why don't you talk it over with your friend, Mr. Malone? A hundred grand. Well, at least they're not pikers. <laughs> They're not going to get it. I'll say they're not. There's only one thing to do, Jay. Yeah? I've got to tell the truth. I suppose you realize what that would mean. Prison, I suppose. Yeah, and you uh, weren't very keen about that a few weeks ago. Couldn't be any worse than knowing that I'm a liar. 
How very touching. But you realize that your noble sacrifice would land me behind the bars too? And another thing, I put up quite a sizable sum to get you out of that other jam, and I mean to collect with interest. I know. What are we going to do about Prescott's wife? His widow, you mean. And I think uh, said widow and her boyfriend will make a hasty departure. After I've told them a few things I know or suspect, I don't think they'd care to be questioned regarding the circumstances of Prescott's death. I don't get you. No? Well, you see, Prescott was murdered. And if they think... They've just come upstairs. Let me attend to this. I'll explain later. Would you like a cigarette? Yes, thank you. I gather that you talk things over with my husband? Oh, no, dear lady. As yet, I have not been able to communicate with the spirit world. Jack, you startled me. I've got to tell you something, Diane. First of all, I love you. And I'm not your brother. And that girl upstairs is not my wife. I never saw her before. Why, Jack, dear, what are you talking about? I'm trying to tell you that I'm not Jack Prescott. Tell me, Mr. Malone, do you write murder mysteries as a sideline? Oh, dear, no. But I have the solution to this auto camp mystery. You see, the suspects were careless enough to leave their fingerprints in the cab. And furthermore, the owner of the camp saw the pair and will be able to identify them. Look here, Malone. You're not going to turn us over to the police. No? no why not? Because you'd lose your cut in the estate if they found out Prescott was dead. Oh, yes. So I would. But don't overlook the fact that the murdered man was never identified. No? Well, what's to prevent us from spilling the works if you have us arrested? Nothing in the world, my dear boy. But who do you think would ever believe such absurd charges coming from suspected killers? They'd probably call in an alienist. What are you going to do? What any public-spirited citizen would do, of course. Call the police. Hey, that guy! I'm not trying to defend myself. I suppose those days in jail sort of broke my nerves. I was ready to do anything to get out. 
I'll go to the hotel tonight, and in the morning I'll have the lawyers turn the estate over to you and your mother. you're going. That's my affair. You're staying right here till morning. Oh, of course, if you put it that way. That thing might go off accidentally. You know, I'm no good to you dead. <laughs> Jack at all. Mr. Malone brought him here to claim the inheritance because he looks like Jack. Are you trying to tell me he's an imposter? Come on, get up. to do it, or go to prison for something he didn't do. Yes, I see. Oh, Mother, what do you suppose they'll do to him now? After all, he's willing to make amends. Mr. Malone is really the guilty one. I'm not sure, but I think it probably rests with us. If we refuse to prefer charges against him, I don't think they would do anything. Oh, Mother, you're a darling. Now, my dear, run along and get some sleep. We'll see Mr. Brownlee in the morning. You know, I could like you if you didn't remind me so much of my late husband. Thanks. Why don't you call in Malone, then we could play bridge. I don't think we'd better disturb Mr. Malone. Too bad that telephone's out of order. You don't overlook anything, do you? 
By the way, if I'm not being too impertinent, do you mind telling me just what you intend doing with me in the morning? You're going down to the bank and draw out that money. Which I'm to hand over to you. All of it? Why not? You won't have any use for it. You can't do that. Can't put a spade on the ace of clubs. Morning, Mr. Malone. I brought your breakfast. I went to tell Mr. Jack about it first, but the room was empty. This is horrible. The line's dead. I'll have to go to town. What is it, Thomas? It's about Mr. Jack, miss. I'm afraid he's in some trouble. Have you seen him? Yes, just now, at the garage. That gentleman who arrived yesterday forced Mr. Jack to drive away with him. Forced him? Yes. He held a gun on him. You'd better run over to the Martins and call the police. Explain that our phone is out of order. No. Bring my roadster around first. Yes, miss.
all right? Yeah, I think so. Well, there's nothing we can do. I'll go get some help. Darling, what happened? Are you hurt? 